after vision okay so so the human can recognize objects the human uh, our camera is our eye we are capturing through our eye and it is going to our machine uh, the processing unit the central processing unit is our brain and it is processed over there and we can recognize the object and we can uh, get the use of inf information from the object so after that we have to manipulate the image in order to enhance or extract information so maybe while i'm seeing a uh, so we are all uh, most of us are uh, are teachers so when you see an exam paper so it is an image actually so we are capturing the image we are capturing the text and the so the first of all the first uh, uh, observation or the first uh, opinion is an image what we are seeing and after that we are converting the image we are uh, taking the test and we are taking that particular the information from the text. So there are uh, two methods of image processing. One is analog image processing and the, the other one is digital image processing. In analog image processing, it's for physical photographs. We, are, we have for print out or other hard copies of the images. We are doing something with that. Uh, by manually, we'll be doing it. And digital image processing is used for manipulating digital image. We are converting a particular image. So uh, previously in olden days, what we have to do, we will be doing. So we used to take a photograph. We will be scanning the image with the scanner and that will uh, that will be uh, treated as a um, digital image and nowadays we have a lot of equipments we have digital cameras we have mobile phones we have a lot many equipments so that the images can be captured so uh, uh, image acquisition is an easy process nowadays so coming to the point of why we have to do image processing. So these are, what are the things? What is the main purpose of image processing? It's only, the, the first one is for visualization. So they represent the process data in an understandable way. So giving visual form of object that, uh, so for instance, we have a lot of hidden, um, I uh, mean, uh, text may be there, the uh, messages will be there. So when you are seeing an image, people, uh, it, it depends on the perception of the people. So if a, if a photograph is given, I can view the people and somebody can view the background where they are standing. What is a building? What is a poster over there? If they, Are they standing before a hotel? Are they standing before a landscape? Are they in holiday? So if you are posting an image in a Facebook or, uh, or any other, any other uh, uh, maybe in social media, what people are doing? So people are uh, searching for searching or visualizing for getting uh, information from that and you also want people to get information that if i'm going to a foreign country you will be posting in front of a monument so people will be understanding you are in you have uh, gone to that particular place so like that we are getting information from um, the images so image sharpening and restoration so image sharpening and restoration is for improving the quality of the images. So we can do a sharpening and we can restore the images. And for the image retrieval is nothing but, so we are uh, retrieving the image, we are storing a lot of images and um, so you may be storing a lot of images in your mobile phone on, or in your hard disk. So how do you search that image? Do you have any applications? So we have a Google. So when you are Google has a image search. So when you are searching any objects, so with an image with with Google, Google has an image search. You can upload the image and you can search. So the objective is. So this is a, a question for thought for the students as well as your, the teachers. So you can post, you can ask the students, you have thousands of images in your uh, hard, hard drive, hard disk. Okay, how do you search the images? So can you ask the students to write a, a desktop application so that if you want to search an image, can you uh, retrieve the image? This is one of the challenging tasks, the image retrieval and object measurements, measure the object in an image. How do we do that? So uh, in medical image processing, so we are measuring the, uh, so my uh, PhD, my research area is that I have measured the thickness of the left ventricle. So how do we do that? So we have to delineate the borders first. So we all know that the um, uh, heart has uh, four chambers. So the ventricles and the 
okay so the ventricles the, le uh, the left ventricles uh, uh, pushes the blood to all the parts of the body so that if the mesh the thickness of the left ventricle decreases or increases there is a problem so we may get any heart diseases because the the blood is not pumped all over the body so we have to measure the thickness so you may ask me the question may be now so why we have to measure where so why the doctors are not measuring that so why don't we give it to the doctors see we are working in interdisciplinary area so in india the expertise the expert knowledge the medical experts are uh, very less so we have to diagnostic so the diagnosis is more important that make a prevention. So we can assist the physicians to help them uh, by diagnosing the uh, diseases. So by measuring the thickness of the left ventricle, so it is between the inner wall and the outer wall, how we are measuring the thickness. So this is object measurement. One of my professors, uh, he is doing a research in brain cancer can images. So the brain images, he is measuring the thickness, or so, sorry, uh, the measure, measuring, measuring the, uh, I mean, uh, the cancer area. It is measured in pixels and it is converted to centimeters or uh, any other measurements. And coming to pattern recognition. So recognition is one of the biggest area. So we have to recognize people. We have to recognize objects. And uh, this is, uh, uh, it, is a, it is a very challenging and demanding area. So and uh, while recognizing, we will be distinguishing or classify the objects based on their position and understand what is there in the screen. Okay, so uh, in pattern recognition, one of the thing is we can measure or we can recognize whether the driver is, uh, eyes of the drivers are open or closed. Okay, so now let us talk about how the images are read by the computer. What we are seeing the image or a photograph, is it is definitely different from how a computer read the image. So let's take an example. Here we have a black and white image. So this is a black and white image. It is also called as grayscale image. This is the image of a number eight. So when you zoom it, so this is this is becoming like this. When you look at the very closely, so you can see a distorted uh, some something you can see. There are small square boxes. So we all know what is a pixel, right? Pixel is a picture element. So these uh, small boxes are called as picture element. When you look into that very closer, when you zoom it and when you look into that, these pixels, every pixel has a value. So the dimension of the images, uh, it is X cross Y. So X is a horizontal axis, Y is a vertical axis. What does it actually mean? This is, means the dimension of the images, simply the number of pixels. So the number of pixels is 24 cross 16. So the it is uh, 24 pixels height and um, 16 pixels width. So this is how the number eight is arranged in a grayscale. So now you can see that these are, uh, so when it is black, it is zero. When it is white, it is 255. When it is pure white, it is 255. So the grayscale ranges from zero to 255. Now you can see, uh, so the image is not visible. Now only the, uh, the numbers are visible. So you can see these numbers forms the image. So you can try it with your own photograph. So take your photograph, read it in MATLAB. MATLAB will be will be giving you, so I, I think we all know about MATLAB. MATLAB, you just give I am read of that particular image and I am show of that particular image. So when this uh, image is shown, so you can have an Excel sheet. So that Excel sheet will have all numbers. So when you are uh, zooming in and zooming out of this number, you can get your own image, any images for that sake. You take an image, you take, uh, so you just, for the analysis purpose, you can make it the, make the images um, uh, grayscale or color. So everything is numbers. So you can understand the computer takes every image as numbers, okay? So this is a basic concept of image processing. When you are understanding this, you can do any kind of analysis. So this is all about uh, multiplying or uh, convolving or you are transforming or you are adding up. That is actually a simply a matrix multiplication or matrix convolvement or it's a dot product of the matrix, anything. So this is all about uh, image uh, 
uh, uh, generally it is processing. So when it comes to color images, again, it has a color is a combination of three colors only. So the computer has only red, green, and blue. The combination of colors will become a color image. So for red, there are different numbers and green, there are different numbers and blue, there are different numbers. So there are red channel, green channel, and blue channel. So every channel has its own matrix. Okay, so in the color images, the number of matters uh, so it is a combination of three matrices. So this is actually R RGB matrix. It can be any other uh, pattern like CMVI or any other pattern, but everything, everything has its own numbers and it is a combination of any image. It is a combination. So if it is a color image, it's a combination of three channels. And if it is a, a black and white image, it is a combination. It's not a combination. It is between zero and 255. Okay. So this is the basic thing we have to understand when it comes to image processing. Okay, so the first step in image processing is to uh, get an image. So this image acquisition, after the image acquisition, the image uh, can be converted into a digital image. So that digital image needs some pre-processing. So the image will not be offered uh, desired quantity quality. So what we are doing is we are we have to do some filtering. So we all know that this noise filtering is there. So we can remove the noise. We can remove certain features in the image. We can crop it. We can uh, transform the image to for the next process. So we have to make it eligible for the next process. So filtering and edge reduction are the most common methods for pre-processing, and also. Uh, we can uh, remove certain uh, features of the image to reduce the noises. So we have linear filtering, median filtering, Vienna filter, we have edge reduction operators are there for pre-processing the image. So we have edge reduction, we have Canny, Sobel, Roberts, Privets. So there are a lot of edge reduction uh, operators available. So with those uh, edge reduction filters, masks, so we can do a pre-processing of the image. So you can see here, this is the edge reducted image. So you'll have an original image when you are uh, processing with this mask. So this is a Robert's uh, edge operator, Sobel operator, Marhildreth operator, and Privet operator. And these are the edge reduction for image pre-processing. Uh, see, every process uh, need not uh, require pre-processing. Every image doesn't require pre-processing. If the image quality is good, so the image are of uh, higher definition. Uh, we have HD images nowadays, and it doesn't require any pre-processing. We can directly process the image with other things. So when you are taking some images, for example, I have taken ultrasound images for my research. So when you take uh, ultrasound images, if you want to delineate some of the borders. So I told you as my research is about uh, delineating the borders of the left ventricle. So it requires uh, edge reduction. So we have to detect the edges so that we can delineate the borders of the left ventricle easily. So that uh, we I have applied uh, edge reduction methods and some of the images may not require edge reduction. So coming to the image analysis. So we have image analysis this involves processing an image into fundamental components to extract meaningful information so whatever is the process the final outcome the final output is to get some meaningful information so it is not that you are we are taking an image we are doing something and we uh, so just that we are leaving it so we have to uh, uh, extract the meaningful information to give it to the image analytics so there are uh, types of image analytics there, descriptive analysis, di diagnostic analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. So these four are the major component of yes, image sir. analytics. Okay, so it talks about wha what, where, and uh, how we are going to uh, deal about image analytics. Okay, so that we'll talk about a little later. So now we'll talk about image analysis. So it's about, again, it's about finding the shapes, it's about detecting the image uh, edges, removing the noise, counting the objects, calculating statistics. So there is there are a lot many application with image, image analysis. Previously, before machine learning, before uh, artificial neural networks, before AI, the image processing, the image analysis is something different. We thought, we all thought image analysis is the biggest thing. So we can uh, count uh, the 
number of objects in an image. So when a, a group photograph is given, when you are able to count the number of people standing, standing in the picture, that is one of the greatest thing. Now what we are doing, we are what Google is doing, Google Photos, a simple Google Photos and mobile phone tells us who are standing in that picture. What is this group photograph? Okay, so if your school uh, uh, giving your school photograph, what uh, machine learning does, what AI does, okay, it is identifying you, it is recognizing you, it will ask you, is this you? I have given my 12 standard group photograph and I have uploaded in the Google Photos, just in Google Photos, it is recognizing to my surprise i was really bewildered so to my surprise it was able to identify it was able to recognize me and my friends so we have our own photographs and that is stored in google photos also it is asking it is matching those photographs with these features how it is doing okay this is an advanced analysis and it is recognizing people that is one of the object analysis is one of the major thing in machine learning Okay, so it uh, recognizes and identifies people by calculating statistics for texture analysis. So previously, the uh, so yesterday I saw uh, the texture analytics was handled by uh, uh, Madam, and uh, so every session of this uh, FDP has dealt with machine learning in detail, I suppose. So one of the session was machine learning with Python was uh, maybe the first session. I saw the slides. So it was so elaborative. He has taught you a lot of uh, algorithms, a lot of methods for uh, uh, machine learning with Python. Okay. So, so the image analysis is also a broad term. Um, it uh, generally fit into the subcategories like image enhancement, image segmentation, noise removal with morphological filtering, or it can be a deep learning. Nowadays, even for noise removal, we are using machine learning techniques and region analysis to extract the statistical data. So what are the statistical data in a image? So there are 12 or 16 statistical uh, data we have, we can extract from the image like mean, median, mode, entropy, um, energy. So there are 12 statistical features we can take from the image by the statistical data. So when the, uh, with the, uh, with the, with those statistical data, we can uh, do a lot of analysis with this uh, work. Uh, now we are talking about a term called computer vision. So actually the computer vision is to identify and understand objects and people in images. So we are giving a computer a vision. So uh, it involves both uh, AI and image processing. So that is one of the uh, advancement in computer uh, I mean, image processing. So the next stage of uh, image processing may be a computer vision. So there are three stages of computer vision. So we have uh, low level, mid level and high level. So in the low level uh, image processing, so we'll give input as an image and we'll get input output as an image. So in the mid level processing, we will give input as an image and we will get the features of the image. And in the high level pro processing, we will get the, we will input the features of the image and we'll get the analysis. So let us uh, take an example. Uh, so these are the goals there on, uh, of uh, image and video analysis. So uh, this is about segmenting an image. So you can see the first image, there is a boat, uh, it is a river and it's a mountain. So when you are able to categorize, see it may look simple with human eyes. It is, it is very simple with human naked eye. So you can see a man or a human can see that. It, you can easily identify this is water, this is land, this is mountain and this is a boat. There are four categories in this image. So land is there, river, water is there, mountain is there and a boat is there. Okay, so this is easily you can identify how the computer is going to analyze and first of all we have to segment us so the segment segmentation is one of the um, goal of image and video analysis and we, we can perform measurement on certain area like uh, we can identify and determine the objects so in this ultrasound scan we can identify this is liver this is kidney and this is spleen and uh, we can construct a 3d model of the identified object so we can uh, visually inspect a manufactured object.
so we can calculate the precise location so you can find the interesting events in a video these are the goals of image and video analysis so the term is analysis now we are not yet moved into analytics analytics is something a broader spectrum which we will be seeing in in shortly we'll be looking that too so this is uh, this is what I told you as low image uh, low level image processing. One is the image uh, sharpening. So this is a blurred image. So you can uh, apply a filter and you can sharpen the image. So again, if you are applying a filter, you can blur the image also. This is a low level processing. So you are giving input as an image and also the output is also an image. Again, there's a low level processing and also the mid level processing. See here, you are giving an input as an image. You are applying a canny operator. You are getting an edge image. So this edge image is you are giving as an input. And within any of the data structures, you can use uh, circular knocks and line segments. You are extracting some of the features of the image. So you are extracting only the circles and arcs and also some line segments so this is actually the mid-level processing so you are giving an image input and you are getting a features of the image this again a mid-level processing so you you have a color image and you are using a k-means clustering and followed by a, a component analysis connected component analysis and this is uh, you are what you are getting is in the mid-level processing you will be getting some features of the image you are get, getting the regions of homogeneous colors so who which color is more predominant which is um, like uh, the similar color images, color uh, components we are getting. So this can be applied in agriculture also, where uh, which color is predominant, where the color of green is less, the color of green is more. So there are certain benchmarks, there are certain levels, you can identify the greens and you can identify where to, um, I mean, apply pesticides and where to uh, water. So these are some of the challenging areas, some of the research areas you can look into it. And coming to low to high level, so we have uh, low. Uh, we have an image. We are processing with a low level, so we are getting an edge image. This edge image can be given to the mid level. So we have line clusters. It is high level is identifying the objects. So we are identifying only the buildings in an image. This is a high level analysis. So whenever there is an images are given, so it will identify these are buildings, these are cars, these are two wheelers, these are uh, people, these are signboards, these are some sitting area, this is a parking area. So these kind of analysis and uh, the recognition is called the high level image processing. So hope you will uh, get a uh, clear idea about what is um, image processing, what are the goals and we are in analysis about computer vision, what is low level processing, mid level processing and high level processing. Okay. Uh, and here again, so this is an image. So this image is taken from MATLAB. I have one chart. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. So uh, we have an image here. This is actually the image. So I told you about uh, uh, the MATLAB converts everything into numbers. Here you can see the area. You can see the ma major axis length, minor eccentricity like that. So you will get all type of uh, statistical features as well as the color features. Everything will be converted into numbers in MATLAB. It's not only in MATLAB. MATLAB, you can see the numbers, but other uh, tools, you cannot, uh, some of the uh, tools, we can, you cannot see the numbers. Okay, so here you are extracting the statistical data. So again, it is a mid-level image processing. And these, uh, uh, big, uh, the numbers can be given as input to higher level analysis. Okay, hope uh, this is clear to all. If you have any doubts, you can ask me now. So can we proceed? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, let's uh, proceed with image analytics. 
So, so I told you, uh, image analytics is a very broad spectrum. Nowadays, people are doing the, a lot of analytics. There is text analytics. There, there are data analytics. So, data involves everything. Data, a uh, uh, piece of data is a text. A piece of data is a video. It's an audio. It's an image. So, there are a lot of type of data available because we are uh, dealing with multimedia. So, for example, when you are uh, opening your um, uh, WhatsApp, you are opening your uh, Instagram or opening your Facebook or whatever. So you can see a lot of data. So the data of different kinds. So we are getting uh, GF uh, animated images first, animated videos, animated uh, images and videos and normal images, 3D images, 2D images and um, uh, voice uh, also you are getting so there is a uh, there is a broad spectrum of natural language processing is available because you have alexa what alexa does alexa analyzes your voice it recognizes your voice it plays video sorry it plays audio depends on your voice it it identifies whether you are uh, uh, I mean sad or whether you are happy or energetic whether you are enthusiastic it identifies everything so with the help of natural language preprocessing and AI does a lot of wonderful things. Okay, so image is also a kind of data which can be used for analytics. So image analytics involves the extraction of meaningful information from images using computational techniques. So in the previous slides, we have seen how to extract data from uh, from uh, images through computational techniques, right? So what we have to do is we have to make the data we have already extracted. We have to make the data as a meaningful information. And after meaningful information, the analytics is all about collecting, verifying, analyzing, recommending, optimizing, predicting, and automating. So these are the some of the things which are involved in analytics. So what we'll be doing, we'll be doing the analysis and we'll be predicting. There is something called predictive analysis, predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics. So in the descriptive analytics, what we are doing, so we are analyzing with the past data. So we will be analyzing what we did previously. And in the diagnostic analysis, we will be doing, we will be analyzing the past results. So what are the results? It is a kind of uh, diagnostic is a kind of what? what? So when you are um, having a fever, so you'll be, you'll be going to the doctor, doctor is checking the temperature and he is diagnosing that you have a temperature. So and the past data is what you did. So be, why? Because why? Uh, what is the uh, how we got the uh, the temperature? So whether uh, you had something, you ate something, or you were into uh, some temperature levels, or you were tired, or something like that. So this is what is the descriptive and diagnostic speaks about. And the predictive uh, speaks about where are we going. So with these data, data, what we are going to do. Okay, what is the action we are going to do. And the prescriptive is how to take the action. So prescription is doctor is giving you a prescription to take medicine. Okay, this is what is the whole about analytics. So you have some data, you are analyzing the data and you have the past results with you. With those results, you are going to analyze where are we going and how to take the action. This is about, this is all about analytics in a nutshell. Okay, so we uh, people have a lot of uh, uh, definitions, a lot of definitions, um, a lot of explanations. It's all there. But in a nutshell, I just want to tell you these four things only. Okay, so uh, coming to machine learning analysis, so it examines. So uh, uh, to a certain level, the computational techniques will help. So computational techniques, when you go beyond, we have large chunks of data. We are talking about big data. So big data is the data which cannot be, con uh, the, I mean, organized or be managed by a single computer. So it is the large amount of uh, data are stored in cloud. So all data sets, we have a lot of data sets available. So when you want to process all those things, when you want to do an automation process, we are going for learning. So we cannot learn, the, the uh, single system cannot learn. So we are helping, uh, we are uh, taking the assistance of machine learning. So there are a lot of techniques available. Uh, so it does a prediction in real time without any human involvement. Then we are combining machine learning and image analytics. 
okay so the mainly uh, the image analytics deals with object deduction classification and segmentation so object deduction in one of the major areas so when you are talking so if any researchers are here when you are planning to do your phd so object deduction one of the challenging area you can choose for your research and uh, you can combine classification segmentation there are a lot of machine learning tools and machine learning algorithms available <clears throat> So you can apply those and uh, you can uh, very well publish your papers and you can complete your research. So uh, you can find your domain also. So these domains uh, varies from like uh, healthcare, manufacturing, retail, agriculture, interior design, whatnot. It, it can be applied in anything. Wherever there is an image, you can take the image. There are uh, satellite images. There are, um, I mean... Um, uh, temperature images, sensor images, a lot of images available everywhere around us are everything is images. So you can take any of the images. Okay. And you can do an analysis. You can apply machine learning techniques for anything like uh, starting from pre-processing to image analytics. You can apply machine learning techniques and um, you can apply in healthcare. Like what I did in medical images, you can uh, take a manufacturing images or retail uh, pictures or agriculture images, whatever it is, you can take and analyze. Okay. So why image analytics? So image why we are taking images why we are not taking anything else like audio or text or whatever it is so because images are embedded with speed real-time data it has a, a large storage scale so it has intelligence an image when you see an image it has large amount of data so image is not only the picture of our photograph uh, uh, maybe uh, an ad ticket is an image a flight ticket is an image so when you take an image you have a lot of data over there um, maybe when you are in your toll um, toll plaza, your number plate is taken as an image. So they are doing an image processing. They are extracting the text in that particular image and they are processing it. Okay. So they are adding the deep value and tipping points to the business strategies for retailers, mining giants, banks, insurance companies, and many more enterprises. Uh, so there are a lot of opportunities to mint revenue and uh, creating customer delight you can use image analytics. So it, it contains raw, uh, rich and complex data. Uh, it can uh, You can enable automation, efficiency, and accuracy in decision-making process. So most of the business needs decision-making process. Without a decision-making process, you cannot do a business. So business is all about how, how quickly we are making decisions. For that, we need some uh, automation process. So those automation process need some data. That data may be an image. Okay. So nowadays, you know, um, uh, people are buying... Uh, I mean, uh, the products by uh, the images, okay? And also the billing happens with images. There are QR codes, there are barcodes, and uh, and you have a, um, I mean, the a trolley. So whenever you are placing an object, automatically the price will be calculated. So machine learning algorithms play a crucial role in image analysis, so analytics. Uh, there are supervised learning algorithms uh, with the, uh, the data is labeled, then it is called the supervised learning algorithms. When the data is uh, not uh, unlabeled data you have, it is not annotated data, you have unsupervised learning techniques are used. Uh, so it can be clustering, uh, it can be pattern identification, there may be uh, dealing with anomalies within the data set, image data sets. So what makes the image analytics more crucial? How we are getting the images? We Nowadays, we have uh, smart cameras, image pre, uh, processes are there, optical recognition uh, uh, things are there. I think uh, somebody have texted. Uh, sir, the organizers, if you have any test, text messages, kindly let me know if there is anything in the chat box, uh, any questions, uh, let me know so that I could answer. Okay, so we have sophisticated optical sorting, um, image processing is available. We have uh, robots, we have drones, uh, we have AR, uh, VR uh, devices to capture the images. Uh, so there are algorithmic model. Uh, we have deep learning models, convolution neural networks, uh, and machine learning, machine vision methods for um, image analytics. So nowadays, what has become easy uh, and more challenging is we have lot, 
uh, uh, many sources of images. So we have drones, we have uh, AR, VR also, we are getting so many images. We have pictures which is created. Nowadays, uh, there is a great challenge of finding a AI generated image and normal image. You can uh, you cannot uh, differentiate between those two images. You can give input of your photograph and AI will create your photograph in a different country, a different region. So anything is possible. Okay, uh, so any business uh, has got images as data. So these images can tell everything and anything and everything it tells about. So it uh, tells insights about customer, uh, it tells faulty machines, it tells, uh, it tells the authenticity of the document, whether the uh, signing, the sign of whichever is the signature is true or not. Anything is possible with a image. So it's all about pattern matching and recognition, identification, classification. So coming to the applications of uh, image analytics, I just want to uh, elaborate about some of the application, uh, which I got these slides. I have, I have collected all these data from the internet. Um, uh, uh, maybe at the end of the slides, I can tell you from where I've collected the data. So uh, we have marketing and retail. Um, so in the retail and uh, um, market, so we have a better and deeper customer understanding. So uh, we can identify the products, the customers are, what the customers are purchasing. So we have, um, we can vote related. So we can create new sources of customer value and revenues uh, for improving in-store execution. For example, if a customer is, uh, so we can see the videos of the customer, we can see the photographs of the customer, we can see uh, in a, uh, I mean, um, in a shelf or uh, in a arrangements, how many products are there. You can take a photograph or we can take a video and we can analyze how many products have been purchased, how many products are in store. So those kind of things, we can do it very easily with the image analytics and we can predict. So this prediction is important. The analysis part, we can count how many numbers of products have been sold out. So the prediction analytics is all about. So in this particular year or in this particular uh, zone because of COVID or because of some um, festival or some something else, what are the product which is sold very fast versus the products are slow moving. And according to that, how much we have to purchase, the reorder levels we have to identify. So the inventory management can be easy for the marketing and retail. So the inventory managers, uh, the inventory management brings you a lot of revenue. This is how the analytics helps. And in the oil mining and refineries, uh, so people are using image analytics for avoiding accidents and real-time alerts and predictive maintenance. So we have high res resolution images are captured. We have cameras, the surveillance cameras are available. From those, the images are captured. And so we can uh, uh, alert the people not to go to the danger prone areas. And there is, um, like you can, uh, uh, so you can identify the pressure, airflow, and uh, the motor vibration, everything with the image analytics to increase the machine uptime. So you can increase the quality of the production. So real estate and infrastructure, uh, people are um, having 5D building information modeling, data visualization they are using. So before building a particular uh, building, they are modeling with the uh, 3D images. There are a uh, lot of software available for creating image uh, modeling and visualization. And uh, they are identifying the accidents also. Project timelines and um, uh, property images. Project timelines are identified and it is, uh, so depends on the, so when you are giving a pro, the uh, building constructed, constructed image and you can identify how much building construction is going on, what is the progress and how, when the project will get completed, that can be done with the image analytics. So, uh, so maybe you can give the pictures of the image, the building, uh, uh, I mean, the area are the constructed buildings and it will show you how much is time is required for completing that particular uh, project. And nowadays we have drones for uh, surveys and geolocation services are also available for project collaboration. And in the manufacturing, um, so this is what uh, this industrial automation is all about. So we have IoT. 
so we have we are uh, embedding internet with the machines so we are collecting the data and also for example the recently i have visited a company in coimbatore so that is a company is called genetics they are using machine learning for manufacturing for example the machine is connected with iot every machine is iot enabled so they are producing hydraulics uh, engines hydro uh, so they are producing um, i mean uh, the parts for hydraulics uh, uh, machines for example the uh, when you take an example of hydraulics it's a uh you have traveled in uh, sctc buses right you have traveled the buses so the bus the automatic door opening and closing so when you are going there the driver will open it so that is based on hydraulics so that is a uh, example for hydraulic uh, i mean uh, technology okay so they are producing uh, major parts of that so for that the machine is enabled with iot so the iot what the data is delivered somebody is there sitting in the office um, i mean monitoring the machine like so it is taking photographs of uh, the photograph or video is also connected so he can see how many products are uh, i mean delivered in a particular time and what is the efficiency of this particular machine and how many products are the products are con in the conveyor belt so in the conveyor belt you can have an analysis of how many products are up to the quality so if there are any cracks if there are any other problems the product will be um, in rejected how many accepted project and how uh, products and how many uh, rejected products he can get it through his uh, he 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 don't have to come to the factory to monitor everything he can sit in his place and he can know how many products are manufactured and how many products are of good quality this is one of the uh, biggest advancement in uh, manufacturing industry so where we can so people should not say ai uh, in the, the maybe the mechanical engineers or the automobile engineers or the manufacturing sector people cannot say ai and ml is not our cup of tea it is all robotics and automation when it is all combined everything is interdisciplinary image processing machine learning uh, in production manufacturing car industry everything is interconnected this is what industry 5.0 talks about so when coming to the agriculture uh, so people are talking about smart uh, agriculture nowadays so we can do a better faster identification of nutrient deficiencies i have already told you we can identify the homogeneous areas so where uh, so we are um, so when a uh, when a person when a farmer is having a, uh, a particular uh, acres of land the drones are made to fly over the land and they can um, uh, capture the images of the agri land so we can identify the homogeneous area the colors the color homogeneity can be identified so whether the uh, the full form is green what are the types of greens available and where the water has to be given where the pesticides are uh, the pests are there where we have to apply the pesticides so that can also be monitored so these are the things which is help helping for smart uh, agriculture so weather changes whether uh, the depth uh, the moisture is enough or the moisture is not enough uh, crop monitoring is also available for object tracking is available uh, so it yields a higher crop quality uh, we can do a real time grading inspection vegetation measurement irrigation sorting everything is available so nowadays the bsc agriculture students are learning python language and also they are learning ai uh, and smart agriculture as one of the papers this is a potential area so coming to the next part of my uh, presentation is machine learning algorithms for image analytics so currently we have talked about what is image processing what is image analysis and what is image analytics all about what are the application areas so i think uh, uh, it's clear you, if you have any doubts you can ask me what or else mean? or else we can what proceed Participants, if you have you any doubt, mind you will ask immediately. Uh, you can post your questions in the chat box, or uh, if you have, if uh, if you want to discuss anything, you can mail us, mail the organizers or myself. Uh, okay. So now let's move on to machine learning algorithms. Hope uh, everybody would have uh, seen this uh, image uh, in different forms, maybe in different forms. Okay, so when I see anything, even the slide, right? I am seeing this as an image. It's a color image. 
So this white area will have 255 pixel values and this gray area will have less than uh, 255 pixel values. This is RGB, it's a combination of RGB colors. I'm seeing this is an image. So, and you can process the image. You can have a text analytics. You can have an image analytics with this image. Okay, some of you can uh, even remember the COVID uh, virus of this, uh, when you see this uh, picture. Okay, so coming to the uh, technology aspects, we have machine learning. We have uh, three different learning uh, methods in machine learning. One is unsupervised learning. The other one is supervised learning. The last one is reinforcement learning. So the unsupervised learning, uh, there are uh, clustering and the dimensionality reduction. Uh, so uh, in uh, dimensionality reduction is used in big data visualization, compression, and feature elicitation, structure discovery. Clustering is about... Uh, uh, customer segmentation are uh, in even in images we have uh, doing clustering algorithms are applied here in supervised learning we have regression and classification um, and in the reinforcement uh, so in the reinforcement learning we have uh, uh, it's based on the customer feedback or if, uh, based on any feedback so the machine learns by feedbacks Okay, so real-time decisions, uh, navigation, robotic, automation, gaming, AI, it's all comes in reinforcement learning. So one of the, uh, the major um, net, the algorithms is CNN, which is mainly applied in image processing. So CNN are the cornerstone of image analytics and deep learning also. So they excel as the spatial hierarchies in images through their convolution layers. So this convolution network, I will expand a little. So there are uh, some architectures like uh, AlexNet, VGG, Google Linet. These are some of the tools where you can apply. I, I think I haven't, uh, uh, I have applied convolution neural network only in MATLAB, but uh, there are tools uh, you can um, very well apply. So the CNNs can also perform like image classification, deduction, segmentation, image generation also, also is possible with convolution neural networks. Convolution neural network, if most of the people are using CNN for image anal analysis and analytics. And the next one is recurrent neural, uh, neural networks. The so RNNs are uh, for sequential data processing. Uh, so it will be useful for the image and uh, image captioning and video analysis. We have a continuous video or continuous images. So you can use recurrent neural networks. So it uh, so you can capture temporal dependencies. So it means uh, it is linear or sequential means it is again it is temporal. Temporal means it's actually time based. So one image is, depends on the, no, the previous image. The previous image depends on the previous one. So it is a temporal dependency. So a person is walking, it's a temporal dependency. So because the person will, uh, so if you are taking the image of a person walking or a car driving, then it is a temporal dependency because uh, depends on the time only it moves to the next stages. So it is actually a sequential data. So then you can use recurrent neural networks. So you can use it for video summarization. A person starts from a particular point and reaching a particular point. So you have a video, we have, you have a continuous images. You can make it as a video and we can, so for video summarization, we are using recurrent neural networks. And we have generative adversarial neural uh, networks. We have GANs. GANs are class of neural networks. This is actually a class of neural networks. For It is for used for generating synthetic data that resembles real images. Nowadays, we have a lot of generative AIs, right? Like ChatGPT is one of the generative AIs. And we have Gemini, we have BARD, we have a lot of generative AIs, which will generate text or data, which is look like the real data. Uh, so when you are, uh, we have, when you are using GAN, it creates an uh, image which is look like the real image. So in image um, analytics, GANs can be employed for uh, like image generation, it's augmentation. So we have augmentation, right? So generating or transforming the image. For example, when you want to make the network learn, what you have to, what you all have, have to do, you have to augment the image. What is augmentation? It's about transforming the image in different versions. Like you can do a flipping, you can do a rotating, we can do a cropping, scaling, or you, you can add noise. All these comes under like uh, augmentation. So this data augmentation is possible with your generative adversarial networks. 
So we have conditional GANs and progressive GANs, which can be developed by a specific image generation task. You can in, input one particular image and according to, uh, so that image can be taken as an input. And with that uh, input, it will generate uh, the uh, synthetic data, but it resembles a, uh, like the real image. This is one of the advantage of generative adversarial network. Like it is, again, it is a generative AI. So we have a uh, lot of object recognition or object detection algorithms like uh, uh, RCNN, uh, so YOLO, SST. Uh, so these are some of the commonly used object detection uh, uh, tools. So these algorithms, what it does, it localizes the objects within an image. So for example, when you want a group photograph, or you, when you are taking an image and you want to find out where, where is that particular object, so you want to find out a cat, you want to find out a dog, where it is standing. So is a, is a cat is present in that particular image, then you can use this algorithm, so object deduction algorithms. And semantic segmentation is something about you have a label for the image and according to the label, you are going to uh, object delineation or you are going to um, deduct the image, then it is semantic segmentation. So semantic segmentation giving a meaning or giving an annotation or giving a label to the pixel. Then you can use uh, like fully con convolutional neural networks, unit. So these are some of the, uh, the segmentation uh, methods you can use it with medical images, satellite imagery analysis, or autonom and autonomous navigated, like drones, drone images, those kind of images, you can apply the semantic segmentation, where you'll get some annotation also. So histogram-based uh, uh, HOG, histogram-oriented gradients, and uh, SIFT and SURF, these are some of the feature extraction techniques. <clears throat> Like, uh, so some of the features in the images can be, should be extracted and uh, like, alg algorithms like uh, support vector machine, SVMs. So they, they, those are the algorithms which needs data input. So those data can be extracted in the, from the images using these techniques like uh, HOG or SAST or SURF. And uh, so this can uh, uh, give uh, as the input for SVMs. So the SVMs are mainly it is for image classification and also for object recognition. So and coming to dimensionality reduction, so it is like principal component analysis. We have lot many uh, features in an image. We want to categorize or we want to take only the, the main components. So then we have to reduce the other uh, features. Then we'll be going for dimensionality reduction. So it is about elimination. So uh, whenever you are giving some cho choices, if you don't know what is the, uh, um, the correct answer, what you'll be doing, so you'll be doing an elimination process so what whichever is not relevant to that uh, question right so you'll be eliminating and whichever is the very close to the question and very closely you you feel like it is good the, then you'll you will be putting that into a as a principal component this is what is happening in principal component and analysis so uh, like that so you are doing a reduction so dimensional reduction is done so this facilitate uh, the clustering or downstream analysis on high, high dimensional image data sets. You have large data sets, so you want to reduce the features, then you have to go for dimensionality reduction. So all these things, so you you will be combining one of one uh, two or three techniques in particular uh, project, or you'll be using a single technique. It depends on you. You have to select the tools in the um, process. And <clears throat> So whenever you are applying uh, these techniques, so so far we have seen um, like segmentation, object deduction algorithm, future deduction algorithm, segmentation methods, and we have uh, GANs, we have RNNs, we have CNN, we have a lot of tools and a lot of uh, methods, algorithms are available. So what we have to do is we have to give that to, to a machine learning requirement input. So before giving into the machine learning model, so we have to do a considerable work so this machine learning algorithms require a high quality data to learn and predict uh, high accurate results. So previously, uh, when I was working with my research, the, um, the neural network model was not working properly because my data has so many noise. So the ultrasound images uh, has a lot of additive and uh, the multiplicative noise. So it depends on the machine. So the machines are not, uh, 
uh, so most of the um, nowadays we have sophisticated machines in previous before 10 years uh, there were no sophisticated machines available for acquiring ultra ultrasound images so while ultrasound images there will be poor machines are available so when you take data from those machines you will get a uh, speckle noise so that speckle noise is a kind of multiplicative noise which is available on this uh, images. So you have to apply median filter, even when you apply median filter, uh, it won't, uh, it won't have much help. So what happened, you know, so this uh, CNN, um, I mean, uh, machine, um, neural networks, the output was not that great. In that time, what we thought is uh, neural networks won't work at all. So nowadays, you know, the quality of the images are also the of high quality so that we are getting most accurate results with uh, uh, neural networks. So this, uh, to, for producing uh, high quality um, results, we have computer vision comes into picture. So this field uh, able to understand the image data. So computer vision help you to understand the image data better. So we can process and transform and manipulate images. So far we have seen some algorithms. We can use those tools and algorithms for transform the image and give a better quality image input to the ML algorithms, okay? So we, what we have to do is we have to convert all the images in the same format. So like we will have TIFF format or GA format or PN of whatever format we have, we have to convert that into a same format and we have to crop the unnecessary regions of the images and we have to transforming them into numbers for algorithms. We have to extract the data and we have to give it as numbers into algorithms and uh, we have array of numbers. Okay, so that's why we are pre-processing them using computer vision. So this is how the ML model works. So we have uh, Bayesian networks, we have decision trees, we have genetic algorithms, nearest neighbor, neural net, there are a lot of uh, ML models are available. So these models, we first of all, we have to prepare the data and we have to extract the features and we have to give us input to the model. So the model may be, so we have to have a test data and the, with the test data, the model trains itself and gives you the prediction. So for example, my model is, uh, if I'm working with ultrasound heart uh, images. Uh -huh. okay. okay, so if if I have this data, what I'm going to do is, previously I was not, uh, the, the algorithm was not automated. Now, if somebody is working with me uh, with the images, so I can, uh, I, if I'm using machine learning, what I'll be doing, I have to uh, take the data, convert it to digital images, or get the images, get the video images, make them as uh, pictures, images. From those uh, images, I'll be extracting the data. I have a test data. That means the normal, without diseases, I have to have the test data, and I have to have the people, the images with disease. So that means that the thickness, uh, uh, the thickness of the left ventricle when it is between 0.9 centimeter to 1.1 centimeter, right? Then the uh, it is normal. If it is beyond that, it is abnormal. So I should have the data which is abnormal and I should have the data which is normal. That is also your test data. And I have to train my model so that it gives me the prediction that whether the person will get a heart disease or not. So the disease name is ischemia. So I can predict whether the person will have ischemia or not. This is how the model works. So this is a sample uh, machine learning model for image recognition. So you can, uh, this I've taken from IBM website. So this, uh, you can log in the application. Uh, so open the camera, take a picture of this particular wound and uh, pass image to the machine learning model. So image classification is done. So image is classified. So for, for example, the, there is a wound or not, how far it is, uh, I mean, affected. Then if it is classified as wound, yes, then you get the medical results or it can be dis display the results of the medication by the image without a doctor. So this model is without a physician. Okay, so uh, so what it does, the machine learning model does, it has a lot of images with the, with the wound. So it will identify where is the, whether it is, it's really a wound and what is the, uh, I mean, the seriousness of it and it can suggest you some medication. If it is not, so image isn't identified. If you want to take a new picture, you can go uh, so go to uh, go again and take a new picture. So or else you can exit the application. So it's a sa sample. It's a simple ML model for image recognition. This is how you have to design your machine learning model for uh, image analytics. Okay.
So the image recognition, uh, uh, this is a small roadmap uh, uh, because every, uh, we are talking more about image recognition rather than other things. So you have to feed this into the system. So you have to convert into numerical values, every image. So uh, please understand the computer or the machine is not accepting the image as such. It is converting into a numerical values. So it has a lot of feature in it. It has color, contrast, it has um, uh, the brightness value is there. Uh, it has brightness values, it has contrast values, it, it has all statistical values that is converted. And uh, so the numerical system is, the numerical values are feed into the system. So you have training sets also converted to numerical value and future is extracted and the recognition is done. This is how it goes. This is the image recognition roadmap. And we have uh, certain tools for image uh, recognition. So we have Amazon, we have IBM image reduction, Google image search, and you have uh, Google Cloud Vision API. We have Vimega. These are some of the tools which we can use, we can download, and you can um, uh, give your image and get your output. And if you want to create your, your own image recognition system also, the algorithms, the previous slides has told you a lot of algorithms you can apply and you can create your own image recognition tool. Okay. So at present, like um, this, uh, the importance of being earnest as a company, TIOB has recognized 250 programming languages are present for um, machine learning and image processing algorithms. So out of which we know Python is the most popular programming languages, which is uh, highly used for machine learning. And uh, we have OpenCV for Python. Uh, you can use OpenCV. Uh, so it's a huge library, it's open source, uh, and it has a great community also. So if it, if you have a great community, you have, you can, uh, give us, uh, get your suggestion and give your suggestion also. Okay. It's a, uh, it works with, uh, um, graphical processor units and it has a cross platform. Uh, so open CV I have worked with, it's a very good Python library, library for computer vision problems. Like you can do a segmentation, you can do pre-processing and you can do future extraction with open CV and Keros is also one of the platforms you can work with and you have TensorFlow. TensorFlow is by Google and, uh, it's one of the, um, popular uh, machine learning development frameworks. And you have PyTorch, that's why Facebook is again with Python. You have Cafe, it's again as a deep learning model. Uh, it's by uh, BAIR Research. Uh, if you want, you can download and it can work it's because it's open source and it is actually C++ based. So EM, uh, uh, GU is again a class uh, cross platform. Uh, I haven't worked with this uh, image processing library. I work with uh, OpenCV and the uh, Keros. And uh, I have worked with TensorFlow also. So we have uh, in TensorFlow, we have wide range of ML and NN algorithms. If you want to work in um, like machine learning with Python, you can use Anaconda and uh, Anaconda has a library called scikit-learn. Scikit-learn is also one of the machine learning uh, tool which you can use. Uh, we all know MATLAB uh, is actually, a, it has a huge, uh, it's very powerful image processing toolbox it has. Uh, it is highly interactive. Uh, you can segment, uh, you can, uh, you have a lot of uh, tools available, uh, but it is a proprietary uh, tool. As we are educators, uh, we are in the uh, education industry. We have, um, I mean, um, um, university uh, licenses available, so we can work with uh, MATLAB. So it's, it has a wide range of deep learning image processing techniques. And also um, we have other toolbox also. Everything starting from pre-processing to image analytics is possible with MATLAB. So you can, um, you can explore MATLAB. This is one of the uh, best suggestion I can give you. So if you are not working in Python, if you're not comfortable in Python, so you can use MATLAB. And if you are uh, uh, comfortable in Python, there is no match for you. So you have a lot of libraries. You can uh, go on, proceed anything with Python. And you have image annotator. So it's a web application for image annotator. So you can uh, detect objects, images, video. And um, this is one of the very good uh, web application. So Google Cloud Vision, again, uh, it's, uh, it's an API uh, for image classification. Um, you can use just Google Photos, Google Assist, 
and uh, these are some of the tools again i'm coming back to neural networks because i want i just want to tell you about cnn uh, we have some more time so we can uh, cover uh, cnn so i just give a brief about cnn uh, because it's broadly used for image processing so cnn has um, layers uh, which has uh, three dimensions weight height and depth have it has two components feature extraction and classification is possible with uh, cnn so you have a convolution layer, pooling layer, and we have a fully connected layer. You have one more co layer called a ReLU layer. It is rectified li linear unit layer. So this is fu this function is reducing uh, is applied for overfitting. So if you want, you can take it. Otherwise, you can uh, go with this uh, convolution layer pooling layer and fully connected layer. For example, you have this original image with you. We are applying this convol convolution uh, application. And this is a filter. This is a convolving filter you have. And this is your input image, sorry, output image. For example, uh, you just please understand what is convolution. So this particular, this, so this is a three cross three matrix matrix. And this is also a three cross three matrix. So when this matrix is applied on this, so this is uh, the, there is there will be convolving around. So what we'll be doing is it's just a matrix dot product multiplication. So with this filters, for example, I'll tell you a small example for mean filter. So what does this mean filter does? What is what do you mean by mean? Mean is just an average. For example, if you are taking if you want to apply mean filter on this particular image, are you getting my point? Everybody can see my screen. So I told you the image image is of numbers, correct? So now what I want is, I want to apply median filter, mean filter on this image. Mean filter, what it is, it's an averaging filter. It is smoothening the image. Okay, for if you want to reduce the noise, so the mean filter smoothens the image. Why? Because we are taking average of these big numbers. We have numbers called 3, 1, 1, 1, 0, 7, 2, 3, 5 take an average of these numbers and you have what what the average filter will do it will replace the average of these values with all these cells when it comes to the next round so it will become so 1 1 24 0 7 13 3 5 1 will become the matrix now so this matrix average will be taken and it will be replaced with those all the all the numbers will be replaced this is how the matrix works Yeah, thank you, Merlin, for your uh, reply. Okay, so like this, uh, like uh, actually that is how the image is processed. So when you are convolving an image, this, this filter is applied on this image and you'll get an output. Okay, this is about convolution layer. And the pooling layer, uh, so we identify the future using a convolution layer. We have, we have multiple future maps. So we have to have we have to downsample the image. We, we want the pooling operation. So whether you can do maximum pooling or we can do minimum pooling. And we can apply a rectifier linear unit for um, to reduce the overfitting and improve the accuracy and efficiency of the CNN. So one of the greater challenge we have is overfitting. So and we have to, uh, it will reduce accuracy. So we are using RELU layer. Uh, so pooling layer, we can do a max pooling or average pooling. I'll tell you how it does. See, he, we have the uh, images after convolution. So this is the, actually this is the, okay. So this is the matrix we have. This is the matrix we have. We will be having the dot product of these matrix and we'll be placing here. So like this, we will get an image of this kind. So this is the output of the pooling, sorry, this is the output of the conv convolution layer. So what the pooling layer does, so it takes a, so this is actually the maximum max pooling and this is the average pooling. When it is maximum pooling, what it does, it takes this, what is the maximum value? It takes 13 is the maximum value. So it will replace with the 13. And here it is 24 is the maximum value, it replaces here. And if you take here, it is 21, here it is 12. So this is, these are the maximum values because you cannot take all the values. You have to have some uh, dimensional. So the downsampling should be there. Okay. We have to reduce some of the uh, thing and in the average. So the average of all these numbers are taken. The average is six. Here it is nine. Here it is 10. Here it is five. This is called average pooling. So this is about the pooling layer and in the fully connected layer and 
it operates on a flattened output. So we have a flattened input uh, out of the spooling layer. It operates on the flattened uh, uh, input. And um, so it is connected with all neurons. As usual, the neural networks, it has layers and it's all connected with the neurons. And uh, so it is, it's actually the optimizing, optimizing the class course. So this is how CNN architecture is for image classification. We have a car. This is the input is here and the pooling is done. So convolution is also done here. The classification is happening. So it is identifying whether this is a car, truck or van or it is a bicycle. This is how it works. Okay. So, uh, so far I have explained you what is image processing, uh, what is image uh, analysis, and what is image analytics and some of the machine learning algorithms and tools we can use for uh, machine learning. And now it's time for to see the challenges. So the first challenge will be the data quality and quantity. All the machine learning algorithms requires large amounts of high quality data. So why we are going for machine learning, we have a lot more data. We want to automate it. We don't want to do it manually. We want to uh, do the process uh, automatically. And for the prediction also, we are going for machine learning. And uh, the feature extraction and representation is also one of the uh, biggest challenge. Uh, so th that's what we are using for using computer vision algorithms. And dimensionality reduction. So we have high, high dimensional data, which uh, uh, it, it leads a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, the space occupation is more. And model selection, which model, which model architecture we have to select. We have, whether we can go for, uh, here, uh, there is again the problem is we have to choose the ML model. We can use CNN or RNN or whatever it is. We have to, it's all a trial and error basis. So it depends on the training algorithm. Some of the algorithms may work good for some of the images. So this is again a problem like for medical images, this may work. For uh, satellite images, some algorithm may work. So we have to do. So the task is non-trivial. There is no trivial uh, algorithm. So this is for this images. This is this is for real-time images. This is for natural images. This is for satellite images. We don't have any trivial algorithm or trivial ML model. This is one of the biggest challenge what we are facing. And the overfitting again, it's a uh, problem. And um, interpretability and explainability after um, uh, the neural networks uh, so they are black boxes is uh, it's not transparent so it depends on that we have to uh, the decision making the interpretation will become it's a problem it's a challenge again so robustness to noise so the, we have uh, occlusions we have as i told you the ultrasound images has speckle noises i like that every image has some noises uh, so it depends on the noise we have to apply the filters so again this is a uh, problem again so we have computational resources, depends. We have high dimensional data, we have videos, we have uh, um, real time data. So we have to store it and we have to operate it. So again, the resources is also a challenge. So we have uh, deep learning algorithms, neural networks, machines. Uh, we have a um, lot many things to progress with AI algorithms. And image analytics uh, powered by machine learning holds the immense potential. So, so far I have explained you the possibility of doing research. There are a lot of research areas. There are a lot of potential demanding uh, which, uh, require, uh, which require transformation. So we can transform the industries and drive innovations. There are a lot of innovations can happen with image analytics. So by leveraging the wealth of information, so we are in the uh, era of, living in the era of information. So with the wealth of information, uh, when the images, so we are talking about image analytics only. So in the images, so organization can uh, make data driven decisions, which can uh, give them uh, greater accuracy and efficiency, which, uh, which uh, can make them um, bring them revenue. Uh, so with this, uh, we are con coming to the conclusion of this uh, presentation. And I have a small quiz for you. Okay, so can we go? I hope uh, Raji sir will not take this quiz into consideration for certificates. I just want to know how much you have uh, grabbed my topic, uh, uh, my presentation. That's why I have a very small quiz. I have only two, uh, four questions, uh, I think so. So this is the first question. The question is, what is the primary advantage of using convolutional neural networks? 
Can I get the answers? Is the question visible? Can I get answers, yes, please? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So it's all very simple question. Try it out. Try it out. I just want to have an interaction with you all. I just want to know how uh, how much you have uh, listened to this uh, sessions because all online sessions, you know, uh, this online sessions are very difficult. You are, we all know what we uh, what we did in COVID. How much we struggled in COVID period. Yes, uh, I have uh, one answer, C, okay, C is the answer, okay, okay, any other answer, two, Merlin ma'am and Josephine has answered, okay, good, that is also good, all are good, okay. Shall we see the answer? So the answer is CNN are computationally inexpensive. Okay, so that's why we are choosing CNN. Uh, even though um, automatically learn hierarchical feature from raw pixel values, it is actually computationally inexpensive. So the answer is A. So the next question is, what is the process of converting an image into a digital form is called? The simplest question you, you ever heard in your life. Answers, please. What is the process of converting an image into a digital form? Any answers? Good. Good, good. I'm getting answer from Josephine. Thank you. So at least one participant is responding. Two are responding. Bhuvaneshwari has also said it is two. It is A. Yeah. Uh, it's a very simple question. The answer is... Um, okay. Digitization is the correct answer. The third one is, which of the following filters is used for age reduction in image processing? Answers. Yes, any answers? Which of the following filters is commonly used for edge reduction? Yes, Gaussian filter. Uh, people have answered as Gaussian filter. Okay. Let us check. Sobel. Somebody said it is Sobel filter. Merlin said it is Sobel. We'll say Merlin is correct. Sobel filter. Good. Good. The next question is, which technique is used to remove noise from image by replacing each pixel value with the average value of its neighboring pixel? Can I have the answer? Okay, I'm just moving to the answer. It is B. Good. Okay, the last question. Which term describes the thought of reducing the size of the image? What is the process of reducing the size of the image? What is the process? Blurring, downsampling, histogram equalization, and morphological operations. Can I get the answers? This is the last question. So, ah, good. Sri Vidya has answered. Okay. Uh, so, answer is downsampling. Good. Okay. So, with this, if you have any queries, you can ask me now. I hope. Um, um, I have explored uh, features of image processing and uh, image analysis, analytics, 
and the machine learning algorithms uh, where you can apply and the application areas of image analytics. Hope the session was useful to you. And you can give your, uh, thank you, give your feedbacks and your questions. If you have anything, you can uh, let me know. And this is my mail ID. You can post your feedbacks. Thank you. I could see some of them. Uh, so, Josephine, thank you. Thank you for your insightful speech. On behalf of SKP Engineering College, I extend our heartfelt gratitude to Professor Supalakshmi for an invaluable contribution to our national level faculty development program on image analytics using machine learning. Professor Lakshmi's insightful session has not only depended on our understanding of the virtual field, but also highlighted the significant role of machine learning in the context of image analytics, particularly in the realm of securing patent rights in India's dynamic academic and technological landscapes. Professor Lakshmi's distinguished academic and professional journey marked by her significant contribution to the field of computer science and engineering. Professor Lakshmi's distinguished academic and professional journey marked by her significant contribution to the field of computer science and engineering has been a source of inspiration for all of us. Her expertise in image processing, data structures, and database management systems, complemented by her extensive research works, has truly enriched today's section. We are immensely thankful for the wisdom and insights Professor Lakshmi has shared with us today. Her dedication to advancing the for uh, front trees of engineering education and research is evident in her impressive body of work and her commitment to nurturing future generations of engineers and researchers. As we concluded today's program, we are inspired by the Professor Lakshmi's guidance and motivated to explore the vast potential of image analytics and machine learning in various domains. Her contribution today have not only enriched our knowledge, but also opened a new avenue for research and applications. For us a deeper appreciation for the transformative power of technology in shaping our world. Thank you, Professor Supalakshmi, for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us and for being a beacon of inspiring in the field of engineering and technology. We look forward to the opportunity to learn from and collaborate with you in the future. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. I have shared my uh, email ID and contact number. Some of the participants have asked for my contact details. I have shared with you. And if you want, you can contact me anytime. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Raji sir and other uh, uh, the coordinators and the organizers of the event. Thank you so much for giving the opportunity to share uh, my experience with the participants. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Kavin sir's team, you will share the screen. Kavin sir, share your screen, sir. Kavin sir,
Hello. Hello. Audi audible and visible, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. Oh, okay, okay. Greetings to all participants of today's national level faculty development program on securing patent rights in India within the emerging academic and research domains in the current technological scenario. Our session, our session today, titled "Write a Research Paper for the Scopus Journal and Get Patent Rights in India," promises to be comprehensive guide for aspiring researchers and academicians. We are proudly honored to the, to have a Dr. K. S. Kavi, the Distinguished Managing Director of Hardit Mitra Industrial Industrial Technologies Private Limited, India, leading this curricular decisions. Dr. Kavi, an alumnus of Government College of Engineering, Trunalveli, affiliated with Anna University, holds on PhD in Electrical Engineering, demonstrating his deep commitment and contribution to the field. Dr. Kavi's academic pursuit. Further includes an M.E. in Power Electronics and drives from Shanmukhanandan Engineering College, Pudukkottai, and a B.E. in Electrical and Electronics Engineering from C.S.I. Institute of Technology, Tovalai. His research interests encompasses a wide range of contemporary and vital areas such as I.O.T. machine learning, electrical machine, power electronics, and special ed electrical machines, making him a versatile and knowledgeable expert in his domain. Armed with special skills in MATLAB. Embedded system Java, BL, BLSI, and more. Dr. Kavin has been instrumental in posting a culture of innovation and learning through various conference workshops and training programs. His commitment to the academic excellence in, in future evidence by his role in guiding students through project development, thereby encouraging innovative thinking and practical applications of knowledge. Dr. Kavin's extensive exp experience in delivering guest lecture across a multitude of topics combined with the significant significant contribution to the academic community through 14 published papers underscores his status as a leading figure in the field of electrical engineering. As we devil into today's session and effectively writing research paper for Scopus indexed journals and in navigating the interface of patient right in India, Dr. Kavin's expertise and insights will undoubtedly provide invaluable guidance and inspiration to all attendees. Please join me in extending a heartfelt welcome to Dr. K. S. Kavin. We are eagerly looking forward to the wisdom and knowledge he will share with us today. Good morning, all. Uh, I am Mrs. A. Rinkini Devi, a Research and Development Engineer, AB Technologies. I am here on behalf of our Managing Director, Mr. Kavin, sir, uh, for presenting the title on how to write a research paper for the Scopus Journal and get patent rights in India. So we are going to see about patent rights, what are the types of patent rights and how we can apply for patent in, in our country. So first let's uh, see about intellectual property rights, which is termed as IPR. So generally property is considered as a thing or it's a group of things which belong to someone uh, uh, or it can be a thing which belongs to a particular person. For example, we can say an apartment, a land, a mobile phone, a car as an intellectual property. So some of the types of IPR or intellectual property in India are patent, uh, trademark, copyright, 
plant breeders right utility model design geographical integration and trade secrets so what is the need for intellectual property rights so the first need for ipr is economic growth the second one it encourages uh, innovation so people can come over with innovative thoughts the third one is it protects the right of the creators fourth one it can facilitate the ease of doing business and the last one is it enables the transfer of technology so there are around six types of ipr in india which are given by patent copyright database trademark trades secret and design so first one is what is regarding patent so what is patent so patent is considered as a statutory right for an invention granted for a limited period of time so generally patent is provided by a uh, government to an individual and the time period of patent is around 20 years so the next one patent is generally granted to a particular process or product so the patent provided to a product is considered as product patent and also a particular process can also enable a uh, patent so it can be a manufacturing process a manufacturing process of a particular food item or a particular design or something so this can be considered as a process patent now the eligibility criteria for patent the first eligibility criteria for patent is it is non obviousness so what is non obviousness mean non obviousness means it is uh, termed as non discoverable so it should be a thing which uh which is non discoverable the second one it has to be a novel one and the third one it has to be suitable for industrial application next the eligibility criteria for patent in india so in india to for a particular process or a particular product to be um, eligible for patent the first thing it should be a novel one second thing it should be non obvious and third one it should be capable of industrial application so what is a novel thing means a novel thing is regarded as an invention which is different from any other inventions or it has it should not resemble some other invention which is already available in public the second thing is it should be a non obvious one non obvious means it should be a non discoverable uh it should not be a discoverable thing for other individuals and the third one it has to be uh it can it should be applicable to some other industrial applications also so that is it has to it has it should have the ability to be manufactured so these are the eligible criteria for a particular uh, process or a particular product to be uh, to achieve patent in india next one is the type of non patentable inventions in india so which are the inventions which are uh, which cannot avail patent thing is first one an invention which is harmful to a natural law next the invention which is contrary to public order or morality and the next one is the invention which does not result in enhancement of a known efficacy the fourth one is a method of agriculture or horticulture and final one is any process or products relative to medicinal or uh, surgical uh, concepts so these are the things or these are the types of non patentable inventions in india the next one next process is how to file a patent in india so what are the different processes which undergo when we are filing a patent in india the first one is idea generation so it involves the process of generating a new idea which has to be filed for a patent second one is filing of application third one is grant of patent second one, next one is the monetizing patent that is regarding the economic or money wise transactions and the final one is using profits on research and development so these are the uh, steps to file a patent in india next is the process of obtaining patent in india first one is file patent application the second one is the we have to comply with the patent officer's preliminary objection letter third one is we have to wait for 18 months from the date of filing for application to be published in the official gazette 
The fourth step is to request for examination within 36 months. And the final, the next step is to comply with the objections in order for acceptance within six months from the date of report. And the final thing is the controller decide on grant or rejection of the patent. So for the process of obtaining a patent, we have to download the application forms from the IPR India. So the form numbers are presented in this slide, form one, form two, form three, and form 26. Next one is to collect the search fee from the inventors. Next, if there are similar patents available, so if the filing patent is similar to some other patents which are already available, then no process will be further taken and the filed uh, the, process, uh, the patent which has to be filed will be rejected. And the next process is if it meets the criteria novelty, non-obviousness and industrial applicability, then the pro process will further proceed. Next is collection of drafting free from inventors. The next process is collection of patent office fee from inventors. That is the form 18. And the final one is patent is in force for 20 years. So after filing, after the acceptance of the patent, the patent will be in force for 20 years. And after 20 years, the, the inventors of this particular patent, they can renew the patent with the suitable fee. The next thing is who is an applicant. So a person who can apply uh, who can apply for patent so he can be a true and first inventor or a true and first inventors assignee a legal representative of deceased true and first inventor or his her assignee so this assignee he can be a natural person or a legal person so it can be a registered company a small entity startup research organization or an educational institute or government so these are the persons who can be an applicant of a patent so next is the drafting a patent. So a pa patent to be draft will have the following sections. The title, technical field of invention, background of the invention, objective of the invention, summary of the invention, brief description of the drawings, detailed description of the invention, abstract and claims. So some of the granted patent samples are provided. So these are the patent samples granted. So the concept of this uh, patent will be explained in a small manner that is within the abstract the main concept will be provided. So these are the granted patent samples. The next thing is a copyright. So copyright is defined as a term which is used to describe the right that creators have over their literary or artistic work. So this can include any uh, uh, things like book, then paintings, music, literature works, films, uh, any other programs, drawings. So these are some of the examples for uh, copyright. So the famous copyrighted example is uh, the main, the cartoon which is familiar among kids, that is Tom and Jerry. So it is regarded as a famous copyrighted cartoon character. So the term of protection of copyright is literary works, artistic works, and musical compositions are protected for the life of the author and 60 years after the death. Similar thing uh, is similar to the cinematographic films, sound recordings, publication, and photographs. They are also protected for a period of 60 years from the year after it was first published. So what are the rights that the owner of a copyright will hold? The rights are reproduction, distribution, derivation, performance along with paternity rights. So these are the rights of a copyright owner. So the next thing is a trademark. So trademark, we all know it's a brand or a logo. So it can be seen near the uh, main uh, symbol of may, many of the products. So we can see a, tra uh, a description like TR or something like that. So it will it is a trademark registration. So this will, what is trademark registration is, it will provide a legal right to initiate an action against the third party in case of infringement of trademark. So it can be a name or a logo or a symbol or design or anything for a particular company or a particular product. So the, the trademark is the, the particular logo or symbol is owned to that particular product or a particular institution. So in a, no one can uh, take rights on that particular uh, symbol. So that is the meaning of trademark. 
So trademark registered in India is valid for 10 years from the date of filing of an application. The next one is design. So the design pattern covers the uh, outer look of a product. So a design pattern includes the shape, configuration, etc. So for example, um, the in the example provided in the slide, so you can see uh, the Coca-Cola cool drink. So the name Coca-Cola is protected by a trademark. So it is a trademark name. And the drink formula is considered as a trade secret. Packaging art is uh, considered as a copyright. And uh, the Coca-Cola bottle shape is also protected through a design pattern. So these are some of the examples of this copyright and pattern for a particular product. Next one is trade secret. So trade secret is considered as a confidential information which can be sold or licensed. And in general, um, the trade secret is uh, the trade secret information. It has to be commercially valuable because this information is maintained as a secret one. So a uh, well-known example is the chicken uh, recipe of KFC. So it is protected by intellectual property. It's a trade secret because the recipe of the KFC chicken is not known. Next is geographical in indication. So geographical indication is defined as a distinctive sign which is used to identify a product whose quality, reputation, or any other uh, any such characteristics relate to its geographical origin. So uh, it is used to identify some uh, products or some agricultural foods uh, or any other industrial products which is um, confined to a particular location or a particular place. So the duration for renewal is every 10 years, this geographical indication has to be uh, renewed. So some of the well-known GA tags are presented in this slide. So like Tirupati Laddu, a Nagpur Orange. So these are some of the well-known GA indicators. So other well-known indicators, GA indicators from our state, Tamil Nadu, which are the famous Kanjiburam silk, the Nilgri teas, Erode turmeric. So these are some of the famous geographical indicators of uh, Tamil Nadu. So till now we have seen about the concepts of patent, uh, intellectual property rights, about copyrights, geographical indication, etc. And next I will hand over the session to my colleague, Mr. Palwan and sir, and he will explain about the role of artificial intelligence and the concept of designing a particular uh, proposed, con uh, proposed system using this artificial intelligence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Paul Van Ansel, please share your screen, sir. Yes, sir, sir. Yes. Very comfortable to follow. So very good morning. So Nandal gather here. So first of all, thanks for giving the opportunity. So from the pattern work, I have explained to so how to write uh, work scopus paper with the pattern right. So for that, I I choose that uh, one of the major uh, topic, artificial intelligence. So today, artificial intelligence uh, play a major role in all field, uh, in educational field or any 
it all self care so using this artificial intelligence so i make over to analyze analyze the all the process and how to how to write uh, that uh, process so in various applications uh, this artificial intelligence are uh, play major role in uh, every robotics application or a healthcare application and uh, data security social media all applications uh, artificial intelligence play major role so in that artificial intelligence so that a major major contribution to us data mining so with this uh, within this artificial intelligence the data mining so process of analyzing the data and also that are meaningful to our uh, every application so using this uh, data data mining technique we, we we want to create a environment with high stagedy development for every organization so how the data mining works means it will mainly focus on patterns and uh, predicting output and uh, uh, and collecting data so using this uh, the, the, that uh, data mining works so these are the type of data mining technique uh, using used in various field so first one is uh, linear regression so this process is based on uh, re linearly relationship between a dependent variable and independent variable so for example if you are going to uh, build house that house having various uh, rooms so that a linear regression will, will collect the data about that house details and room details it will predict that output based on how, how much price it have to we are we are going to build a house so it will uh, analyze that linear relationship between a dependent variable and independent variable so next type is uh, log logistic regression so this data type is mainly based on our uh, customer prediction so in uh, facebook youtube uh, Uh, netflix uh, applications they are using this uh, logistic reg regression based on their uh, customer uh, recommendation so that it will give user defined so next type is uh, time series so this, this series is based on analyze the data for uh, existing data so uh, for example it will analyze that existing data and it will predict the future outcomes okay so next one is uh, classification and uh, regression trees that the classification analysis is based on characteristical data so it will analyze the data if you are uh, if you are going to a transaction on bank bank application so if you are getting applicant getting a, a bank loan whether he have a criteria so he having that decibel score and uh, this analysis the, so this uh, this classification analyze the data of how every person civil score and it will check that whether the person having that applicant loan is applicable or not so last three uh, neural networks again uh, near neighbor and supervised learning these uh, three are used to mainly for uh, predicting analysis in uh, medical field and uh, plant trees these are all the applications so these are all the data mining technique so mainly it will work for uh, clustering and classification and uh, using that neural network it will it will form a output so how to choose a data mining system so depending upon of our data types so how we are going to analyze the data it will uh, mainly focus on data type the, the input data whether it may be a image or a data text data or image data and also it will have a system issues that uh, that system having that ability to analyze the data that we are going to analyze and uh, we are analyze that data source so what are the sources we have and what are the methodologies you used and uh, finally we get the output that output will match that data sources and also tools scalability analysis we are going to choosing while choosing data mining system so in uh, application point of view there are many uh, fraud detection is there in uh, banking application and healthcare application and education system so the data mining application is very vast for uh, our analyzing data so it will helpful to analyze the data very easily so i choose that one of the 
application in the medical field so it is based on heart disease prediction so in this technique my proposed work is uh, mainly focus on uh, fuzzy cement algorithm using deep cnn network uh, with the veil optimization algorithm this is our proposed work but we have to analyze from basic uh, basic means uh, what are the algorithm first uh, before introducing deep cnn so i have to analyze this all the technique and finally i conclude uh, deep cnn is the best so heart disease uh, is one of the major problem in a, in a very many ages from 18 to 70 ages so we have to predict that heart disease for a, every human being so that research work is based on that uh, data so my, my main objective to improve the data the, we have to cluster in the data using fuzzy c means uh, we have to in enhance the future selection particular data for using i using well optimization algorithm and uh, and finally we have to disease that uh, we have to predict accurate result whether the disease is present or absent without our human intervention it will diagnose no? so that technique we are implementing deep cnn classifier so my main abstract for predicting that heart disease that uh, methodology incorporate i uh, Uh, previously i mentioned fuzzy cement algorithm and also future selection with the uh, veil optimization and the deep neural neural network so this is my proposed work so if you are getting any data for any field we are going to analyze means what are the input data we have to do and uh, how they implemented in segmentation and future how the future selection what uh, what are the technique use and finally that the classification technique so that uh, we have to uh, analyze that uh, input data whether it may be a data or image okay so here i give that uh, input uh, heart data from the patients so we are analyzing from different age persons so in that fuzzy c means uh, segmentation that the input heart data will analyze and uh, what are the age groups there and uh, how the how their uh, their medical parameters it will analyze and it will cluster into similar group it will form a cluster and uh, finally it will give to future selection that a future selection using veil optimization algorithm will work on optimization technique so it will uh, accurately find that from the clustering output it will give the best uh, solution value and finally that uh, future selection for using veil optimization technique that the input is given to classification it will classify so deep cnn neural network having that input layer and continuation layer so using this uh, layers it will predict whether the patient having a disease or not so so these are all the input data from uh, every patient the, there is uh, different age group is there and uh, whether it, it uh, that data having the male or female the cholesterol level and sugar level and uh, angio and whether a patient having angio means it having the separate data and uh, finally we are going to target so the target value will predict whether the patient having a disease or not so these are all the data we are uh, giving a input after it will using fuzzy cement cl clustering we are cl group into several age group okay finally it will show that so using that fuzzy cement uh, algorithm that accuracy will very high compared to our uh, existing works so this are the comparison using analysis k means and the fuzzy cement algorithm that accuracy is very high for a fuzzy cement algorithm so i show a demo uh, in coding so how they implemented and uh, how it works so using that data set so this uh, this are uh, python jupiter we here we analyze the data so these are from 
firstly we are before uh, implementing the data these are the libraries we are going to use so we have to import okay so for uh, we are giving the data that should be visualized and the it, that the data should be spitting and also it uh, it having that capability of trained data and the spitted data okay tested data so for that we are importing libraries for that for data visualization matlab dot pilot so it will visualize the data and also uh, for normalization also skin scale and dot grid processing so for uh, for this system it will operating only on our system so for that we are importing os operating os and uh, what are all the clustering and pre processing so these are all the tools we are we going to import then only it will run okay after that we going to read the data okay so this data already we have having that data set so the, that data set we are going to import okay so from the dot c csv so these are the data that going to read okay so these are all the data we are having from the data it will having that data shape format so how they implemented how they having that uh, target value if, if any in the data it having similar data means it will rectify and uh, finally it will give the data statistical details it will give from data description it will statistically data what are the maximum value and minimum value of patient having a minimum age group and uh, uh, whether it that data having male or female these are all the data and it finally it we having the target value so the target value will only it will predict that a man having that heart disease or not so it will predict that a target if we give that a target this uh, syntax means it will finalize uh, one means out of 1024 okay, here uh, total number of data is 1024 out of 1024 that a targeted values are 526 it having that heart disease okay so the remaining 499 having there is no heart disease okay so we are splitting the data using that uh, like input libraries after that it will uh, uh, based on the target value it will analyze uh, age group okay uh, how the age group versus heart attack so age group uh, so we are uh, previously analyzing there are uh, 526 persons having heart disease that uh, 526 uh, persons having heart disease that compare with the age group what are the age group so uh, that uh, age group uh, having uh, above 80 or uh, below 80 that that is something and heart rate with the age so below age group having that heart rate is uh, very much less so above 70 had having a poor heart rate so it will analyze that date and the chance of uh, heart heart attack okay so from it is all the pre processing so we are giving that data so input data it will pre processing what are the chances and what are the output comes so using that data only we are using k means clustering okay so first basic algorithm is uh, k means clustering so it will clustering the output so it will form a group so it uh, for example if a person having the same age, age group having a chance of a heart attack is 5% means it will gro- it will group into one one data and uh, if it having a uh, Uh, 30 age group it having a heart rate of uh, 10% means it will group so using that uh, k means clustering we are uh, group grouping the data okay so next so next uh, algorithm is from the cluster it will give that output okay so we are giving that input data that uh, k means clustering will group okay so there are uh, six group is there okay so depend on that it will group into form different data cluster by k means algorithm so after that only we are uh, analyzing classification so b- from basic only i have to classify because then only we have the comparison and existing how existing work uh, how and uh, also our proposed work uh, how they vary 
so first i i introduce uh, svc algorithm support vector classification so this algorithm i this algorithm will from the cluster output is it will give the accuracy about uh, 68 percentage so using that uh, svm algorithm it is having uh, accuracy of uh, 68 okay so next nave bias algorithm next uh, nave bias algorithm it is having that accuracy about 73 percentage so that uh, one by one it will having that accuracy better so next only we are uh, using knn using knn classifier we having that accuracy about the uh, 65 percentage so next uh, i will introduce our uh, system uh, pso optimization for filter extraction i initialize particle swarm optimization with uh, cnn okay so using that particle swarm optimization it will uh, using that uh, iteration it will selectively give the best value that value will combine with deep cnn it will have the better accuracy compared to knn okay so using this accuracy is uh, 88 percentage okay so compared to knn it is having that better accuracy afterwards we are uh, using that fuzzy c means okay so fuzzy c means clustering so initially i have used uh, k means clustering so in that only i use proposed work our uh, fuzzy c means clustering so this is the way we have to analyze the data from basic uh, system to proposed work so then only we have the flow of accuracy having better work okay so fuzzy c means clustering it will cluster from that initially we are using that uh, clustering so same using fuzzy c means clustering it uh, clustering the work to previous so it will classify that data okay so it will class it will cluster and that output is given to our proposed work is whale optimization algorithm so this algorithm finally give the best value it is give the best output here so accuracy is 90 percentage so using that fuzzy cnn and the deep cnn neural network it will give the maximum efficiency of uh, 90 percentage so this is the way we have to analyze the data and also compare with the previous uh, work okay previously we are importing several techniques so that technique we have to compare so then only we, that the proposed work having that high accuracy better than our existing work so so next i invite ma'am ranjini ma'am for uh, how to write this proposed work in a paper format thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Rajiv, ma'am, you will share with us. Thank you, sir. Okay. so this is a scopus paper which we have written so this paper is uh, written based on the concept as explained by mr palvan and sir so this paper is based on uh, the early heart disease prediction using uh, dcnn classifier so regarding uh, the writing of a scopus paper the first thing we have to frame is a 
proposed method so for that initially we have to frame the concept so what are the techniques we are we have to implement in detecting the particular process so considering this work our task is to detect uh, the heart disease so in order to detect the heart disease in order to detect it in efficient manner so what are the image processing based techniques which we have to involve so this this is the main thing we have to concentrate on and we have to frame the methodologies which have to be applied to uh, detect the uh, heart disease so for that first we have to frame the steps and initially we have to design the proposed work so here we have initially designed a block diagram so in the block diagram uh, it has to provide a clear pictorial view of the steps which have to be involved in the prediction of heart disease so here we are including uh, an input data along with the process following processes like segmentation uh, feature selection and classification so the first step is to design the block diagram and the block diagram which includes the methods or the techniques which are to be applied for the prediction of heart disease so corresponding to the block diagram the proposed work description has to be written so the proposed work has a description has, should provide a clear view of the process what are the techniques which are to be applied in the prediction of uh, heart disease and the significance of that particular technique so these things have to be clearly uh, presented in the proposed work description following the description of the proposed work each and every techniques used in this proposed work have to be detailed uh, below the proposed work description so regarding this we have applied a segmentation technique a technique a novel algorithm uh, an algorithm for feature selection and for classification also we have uh, applied a neural network technique so these uh, things these techniques have to be elaborated in detail following the proposed work description so um, mainly the description or the modeling of the proposed work should be in detail it should include uh, mainly more equations so these equations will give a better view and a standard look for a particular journal paper so here we are uh, we are explaining in detail about the segmentation and feature selection and classification with the help of uh, more equations so you can get a view of this so here more equations are provided and each parameters or each uh, variables provided in the equations have to be clearly elaborated so this thing you have to concentrate and next uh, flow charts and pictorial representations can add a extra additional value to the paper so these can be included and considering uh, when we are including any uh, algorithm for any purposes like optimization or any uh, prediction purposes if we are including algorithms the description of the algorithms also should have equations along with pseudo code and flow chart so this will also add extra value so in this work we are uh, writing a well optimization algorithm and the pseudo code of this well optimization is presented here so adi adding adding flow chart for this particular pseudo code will also provide a good look for a, a journal paper next the classification technique is elaborated as seen so here the classification for classification we are using neural network classifier so considering a neural network classifier the classifiers should have a good elaborated uh, architectural diagram so this architectural diagram should clearly give a pictorial view of all the layers and all the parts so here we have seen uh, we are seeing a clear architectural diagram of the proposed neural network so in short what to say is a proposed system uh, initially after designing a proposed system we have to provide a proposed system description in a brief way mentioning the uh, details about the techniques used and its um, significance and following the description of the proposed work the modeling of the proposed system components has to be elaborated in detail so adding equations will give more value to the paper and when they are writing algorithms in this proposed system modeling section Uh, include inclusion of uh, 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 inclusion of pseudo code as well as flow chart also will give a, a good view so this is the main uh, view of the view how to write the proposed system description and the modeling of the uh, proposed work so following this modeling section we have the results and discussion so obtained results to the through the simulation process are provided and the results can be in table form or in pictorial form or in other uh, Uh, graph forms so these results have to be placed one by one 
and the results should be provided with clear notations, clear labels, and each result has to be elaborated in uh, detail. So the elaboration of the results should include what is the result here presented and what uh, what is the what we are observing from the result, and due to this outputs, what are the things we have we are able to convey, or we are, we are what are the things we are able to identify from the proposed. system so these things has to be elaborated in the description of the uh, results following the description of the results we have to provide with the comparative analysis so comparative analysis will provide a clear view of how novel your work is and what are the efficient outcomes of the particular work when compared to the existing work so this comparison can be provided in bar chart as shown or in uh, graphs or in pictorial views so while comparing with existing works we can cite the papers also the existing papers uh, or existing techniques these can be cited so this will add more uh, quality to the uh, paper so the, these are some of the um, comparison charts which in which the proposed work or proposed algorithm is compared to existing work so this can uh, provide better efficiency or better value to the particular proposed work next to come the conclusion part the conclusion part uh, should give a clear view of the work what are the things we have done and mainly conclusion should focus on the outcome so what are, what your work uh, work what your work does and what is what are the outcomes obtained and uh, mainly uh, numerical outcomes have to be added in the conclusion part so this is uh, adding numerical outcomes is more important and uh, finally while moving to abstract so it's better to write the abstract of the paper after the completion of the enter work so initially while starting the paper uh, we can uh, start with introduction then proposed system description uh, then we can go for results and discussion conclusion and then abstract so while coming while moving to the introduction part so in introduction part the initially the basic thing of the work that is while coming to heart disease prediction first we have to tell about the heart disease and what are the effect of this heart disease in today's scenario Uh, what are the impacts of it, and why heart disease prediction at uh, in a timely manner is needed, and what are the techniques, existing techniques already there in heart disease prediction, like way. So from basic itself, we can go. So what are the basic uh, techniques used for the prediction of heart disease, and then we can. Uh, what are the existing techniques there, and uh, how are machine learning uh, techniques used in the prediction of heart, and now. how this deep learning techniques play an important role in the prediction of heart disease so these things have to can be uh, elaborated in introduction so the techniques have can be specified one by one what are the advantages of the techniques drawbacks all these things are, can be clearly presented in the introduction part and in the final uh, paragraph of the introduction we can concentrate on the uh, concentrate on the problems uh, provided uh, problems exist in the existing work so what are the problems identified in the existing works can be highlighted in the end of the introduction part and what are the contributions provided by our proposed work which will overcome that particular uh, problem so these things also can be added in the end of the introduction part so this is termed as the research gap as well as the um a research gap as well as the contribution so the research gap will highlight the problems in the existing work and the contributions will highlight the uh, techniques or highlight the concepts which are proposed that will overcome the problems in the existing work so this is the main frame of the introduction part and next is the uh, abstract so abstract should give a good and a catchy view of the Uh, entire paper so while reading the abstract itself we will we should get a clear cut view of the paper so what is the thing the paper is dealing with so why this paper go for proposing uh, this hard uh, uh, novel technique for heart disease then what are the techniques used in the proposed work the significance of the techniques and what are the implications outcomes in which software we are going to implement so all these things have to be provided in the abstract so on the abstract it should have the motivation for the work the techniques used the significance of the techniques and the outcomes so uh, with the abstract we can add the keywords keywords also all the uh, all the technical words have to be added as keywords so this is the main general structure of a scopus paper so considering a, a scopus paper uh, it is mandatory to have a references around the, from uh, 25 to 30 references will add good strength for the uh, scopus paper so this is the overall view of the 
scopus paper work. So in this session, actually we have explained about uh, the main uh, view of, we have explained about the main view of uh, writing a research paper for the Scopus journal and getting patent rights in India. So we have explained about the types of patents, IPR, copyrights, trademarks, and a, a brief description about uh, artificial intelligence and a, a, a particular concept for the prediction of heart disease was explained. Wow, the techniques were also explain then implementation how we are get, uh, implementing and the outputs are obtained the outputs were also explained also we have explained how to write a scopus paper and the general framing and structure of the scopus paper also we have explained in this session so uh, that's all the session and uh, if you have any queries you can post it participant have any query means you will ask Thank you for your insightful speech. As we concluded today's enriching session on writing a research paper for the Scopes Journal and get patent rights in India, I would like to extend our deepest gratitude to our Dr. K.S. Kavin and its team for leading this insightful exploration. His presentation not only alienated us on the criticisms for academic writing within the realms of machine learning and biomedical image processing, but also provided a practical demonstration that will undoubtedly benefit our future endeavors. On behalf of all the participants and the organizing team, I express our sincere appreciation for your invaluable contributions to this session. Your efforts have not only enhanced our understanding, but also motivated us to pursue excellence in our research and academic pursuits. Thank you, Dr. Kavin and his team members for being an exemplary beacon of knowledge and inspiration. We are truly grateful for the time and expertise you have shared with us today. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of SKP Engineering College and specifying the Department of Information Technology, the Department of Artificial Intelligence and Data Science, and the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, I send, stand before you filled with a deep sense of gratitude. Firstly, I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to the Karnanidhi, sir, chairman of the SKP Group of Institution, for his visionary and leadership and unwavering support. Our gratitude also goes to Mr. A. K. Karangaswamy, the Joint Secretary, for his invaluable contribution and a commitment to the excellence. We are deeply indebted to Dr. R. Sakti Krishnan, the CEO of the SKP Group of IT Institution, whose gratitude has been our beacon of its light. His slide post writing has been instrumental in this session of this IT event. A special noted thanks for the Dr. Bhaskar, our principal and convener of the event, whose dedicated and hard work it has been begun of this day endeavor, your leadership and inspired us all. To our co coordinator, Dr. V. Raji and Dr. E. Rajendran Hachori of IT and AADS and ECE, respectively. Thank you for your day, meticulous it plus planning and exhibition of your effort and ensuring the smooth functioning of this event. Our with profound with, 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 appreciation it goes to all other estimated speakers, especially Dr. K. Bhaskaran and Dr. N. Bhatmashini and Dr. Suja A. Alex and Dr. A. Shubha Lakshmi and Dr. K. S. Kavin and his team members. Your expert experience and inciting of the enriched our understanding, our, our presentation have been highlighted at the participant event. We are also thanks to all other department and participants and uh, faculty members and uh, research scholars for this enthusiastic involvement. Your achieving with the participants has been made at this event, not just uh, for the success, but at a memorable uh, one. Lastly, but uh, it is certainly not least, our uh, thanks go to the, all the staff and uh, our Volunteers who said the beginning of the scenes that they have has been the cornerstones of the region. Your dedication and hard work have not gone unnoticed. As it is close of this event, as let us take care and forward the knowledge and insight of the gained into their academic and research 
serving always of excellent in the very evolving that the landscape of the technology. Thank you, one and all, for making this a good event and a great success. Thank you, every participant. Thank you, and all. Thank you. The session will be ended. Thank you for all the supporting team. Thank you to all the all other participants and uh, uh, special guests and also. Thank you.